Hi there, my name is Sue Peterson. I'm a specialist in endocrinology and metabolism and a diplomat of the American Board of Obesity Medicine. And I practice at Siendo Clinic in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I'm also a clinical lecturer at the University of Calgary. The primary objective of the Redefine One trial was to investigate the efficacy and safety of Kegri Sema in people with overweight or obesity. The Redefine Two trial investigated the efficacy of Kegri Sema for weight management in adults with type 2 diabetes. The co primary endpoints in both trials were relative change in body weight and proportion of patients achieving at least 5% weight reduction at 68 weeks. Our natural human biology vigorously defends our body weight, in part because we have many satiety hormones that decrease with weight loss. So in development of highly efficacious weight management medications, it makes sense to combine more than one satiety hormone with complementary mechanisms of action, so as to provide a better sense of fullness, thereby facilitating weight loss and improving weight-related health issues. Semaglutide, of course, is a GLP-1 receptor agonist, and we know that GLP-1 receptor agonists reduce appetite centrally. GLP-1 can also reduce cravings for some people. Cagrillantide is an amylin analog. Amylin is a satiety hormone released by the pancreas in response to nutrient intake. It also works to decrease appetite centrally, and both hormones also slow gastric emptying. Combining cagrillantide and semaglutide differs from existing therapies in that there are no currently available treatments that include amylin analog therapy for weight management. Amylin analog therapy has the potential for unique benefits beyond weight loss, which are currently under exploration. The Redefine One trial was a randomized study of 3,417 adults with BMI 30 or greater, or BMI of 27 or greater, with obesity-related health complications without diabetes. Patients were randomized in a 21 to 3 to 3 to 7 ratio to receive either Kegri Sema 2.4-2.4 mg weekly, semaglutide monotherapy 2.4 mg weekly, cagrillantide monotherapy 2.4 mg weekly, or placebo for 68 weeks. The Redefine 2 trial was a randomized study of 1,206 adults with BMI 27 or greater with type 2 diabetes, randomized to receive either Kegrisema 2.4, 2.4 mg weekly, or placebo in a 3 to 1 ratio. Our study was the first phase 3 weight management study in people with type 2 diabetes to include continuous glucose monitoring in a subset of patients, so we could have an in-depth assessment of glucose profiles with Kegrisema versus placebo. In Redefine 1, at 68 weeks, weight loss was 20.4% with Kegri Sema, 14.9% with semaglutide 2.4 mg, 11.5% with cagrillantide 2.4 mg weekly versus 3% with placebo. Weight loss of at least 25% was seen in 35% of people in the Kegri Sema group, 15% of people in the semaglutide group, 7% in the cagrillantide group, and 1% of those with placebo. Health improvements were seen with Kegri Sema, including impressive improvements in blood pressure, a 9.9 millimeter reduction in systolic BP with Kegri Sema versus 3.2 millimeters of mercury with placebo. Improvement in metabolic health parameters and physical function were also seen. The most common side effects were gastrointestinal, numerically a little more common with Kegri Sema than in the other treatment groups, and mostly mild to moderate in severity. These were most commonly seen during dose escalation and decline thereafter. GI side effects with cagrillantide monotherapy were generally less than with either Kegri Sema or semaglutide, but a little more than placebo. A slightly greater proportion of people in Kegri Sema group had hepatobiliary adverse events, such as gallstones. The need to stop treatment due to adverse events was quite low in all groups, 6% with Kegri Sema, 3.6% with semaglutide, 26 with cagrillantide, and 3.7% with placebo. Now, in the Redefine 2 trial at 68 weeks, weight loss was 13.7% with Kegri Sema versus 3.4% with placebo. Weight loss of at least 20% was seen in 29% of people with Kegri Sema versus just 0.2% with placebo. Hemoglobin A1c was reduced by 1.8% with Kegri Sema versus 0.4% with placebo. In our continuous glucose monitoring data, we found that time and range at the end of the study was 88% with Kegri Sema versus 51% with placebo. Greater improvements in blood pressure, metabolic health parameters, and physical function were seen with Kegri Sema.
In terms of safety, the most common side effects with Kegrisema were again gastrointestinal, mostly mild to moderate and transient with dose escalation. The need to stop treatment due to adverse events, mostly gastrointestinal, occurred in 8% of the Kegrisema group and 3% of the placebo group. Severe low blood sugars were seen in two people in the Kegrisema group. These two people were also on sulfonylurea, which is a medication known to cause low blood sugar. The weight loss results with Kegrisema are similar to the results in studies of other highly efficacious therapies such as terzepatite, known as Mounjaro or Zepbound, in similar patient groups, and tolerability is similar to that of other GLP-1-based medications. Different treatments work for different people, so Kegrisema will present an additional option in the toolbox as a highly effective obesity pharmacotherapy. It will be interesting and important to see how Kegrisema might benefit health conditions associated with obesity. It's currently being studied in a cardiovascular outcome trial in people with and without type 2 diabetes and for potential benefit to nerve pain. I'm also really keen to see if there may be any benefit in terms of preservation of bone with weight loss. Should Kegrisema become approved by regulatory bodies, Kegrisema will present a new treatment option as a highly efficacious pharmacotherapy for obesity. In determining the appropriate pharmacotherapy for our patients, our Obesity Canada guidelines recommend partnering with the patient to identify treatment goals, which may include improvement in obesity-related health issues and values-based goals that are important to the patient, which may or may not include magnitude of weight loss. We recommend selection of pharmacotherapy, taking into consideration which obesity-related health issues that individual has, and recommending pharmacotherapy that has shown benefit for that particular health concern. For some patients, their value is to achieve a larger magnitude of weight loss. That's what's important to them. And Kegrisema would certainly fall into that category as highly efficacious treatment. As we learn more about new and emerging pharmacotherapies and their benefits to obesity-related health issues, this will help us to further refine our selection of pharmacotherapy as appropriate to each patient. 